Hi, I'm Roger. And I'm Albina. This is Dante. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to week three, Equanimity. So you're halfway there at the end of this week, uh, the 40 days. And by now you've had the time to get present to when you are like really here and really aware of what's going on and when maybe you're not, when you're on autopilot and when you're checked out. And through that process, you get really clear on what, what matters to you, what lights you up, that's vitality, what, what brings you into the space of like joy and radiance. And then maybe you're starting to do some of those things. And this week is all about equanimity. I'll share really quickly what equanimity means to me. We went on a ski vacation over the Christmas break with our kids. And on that ski vacation, just about everything that could go wrong <laughs> did go wrong. Starting with um, not booking reservations for our kids and having to shift from one ski town, Santa Fe, to another ski town, Taos, so that we could get our kids into ski school because they were totally sold out. And then through that process, we booked in a bed and breakfast, or actually someone's house, um, through Airbnb. And so we changed all of our reservations, canceled everything, reshuffled everything, and we started driving toward Taos now. And midway through that drive, which was a blizzard from Amarillo all the way up to Taos, like a massive whiteout blizzard getting worse and worse. And Albina actually slid off the road at one point when she was driving because I was trying to deal with the fact, this fact that um, apparently on Airbnb, our, our credit card got rejected. And it really freaked the woman out that maybe we weren't who we said we were. It got rejected because the, the credit card company thought it was a fraudulent activity and it wasn't. Yeah. So long story short, we're driving through a blizzard and we have no place to stay. So as we're doing this, I start texting and, and getting on email over, over the phone. Eventually, like I resolve everything as far as the reservation. And, and we get all the way up to, to Taos. And as we're 10 minutes outside of Taos, feeling like we just survived a blizzard through a mountain pass, I get a call from the woman who owns the house. And she's still kind of skeptical. And she says, did I tell you that it's a four-wheel drive only road that I live on? No, you didn't. <laughs> and we don't have a four-wheel drive. We've got our whole family in the car and we're 20 minutes from you. So all these little points where all these things were going wrong, I, you know, I just said, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. So we start driving up the road to her house and midway up the road to her house, we get stuck <laughs> on, in the ice. So we call her, she comes down and takes the kids and Albina and all of our bags up to the house. And I have to get a tow truck to tow us out. And I go to Walgreens to get, or Walmart, excuse me, to get a, some chains for the tires, snow tires. I've never done that before. It's ice cold and I'm laying there in the Walmart parking lot putting on snow tires and, uh, or snow chains. And my hands are frozen. I'm like, <laughs> kind of a little bit, like, really cold, really miserable. And a woman then, like, is trying to get into the parking space right next to mine. And I'm laying in the road. And there's other parking spaces. And I said, I'm sorry, could you use another parking space? Because, you know, I'm trying to put these snow tires on. And she says, you're an asshole. And I'm, like, coming from nowhere. And I just laughed. I was like, why am I an asshole? And, and I just laughed at the whole thing because it was so preposterous and like so many things had gone wrong that I realized that it's just like everything's going to be fine. They cannot, you can't pile on any more onto this. So anyway, long story short, I got the snow chains on. I'm now a master of snow chains. Drove up to the, to the hill and I got into the house and I was like, are you okay? Because it took you a long time. I said, everything is great. This is going to be the best vacation ever. And from there on, it was. And at no point did I freak out. At no point did I melt down. 
And to me, that's like a benefit of the yoga practice. Like yoga gave me the space to see the bigger picture. Like this is going to be fine. And it was amazing. It was. Yeah. Go is ahead. it my turn now? Yeah. I get to practice equanimity every morning as I get the kids ready for school. And if you have kids, you know what a big ordeal it is. Getting them up, out of the bed, getting them dressed, brushing their teeth, feeding them, fixing their hair, all sorts of things. And it can get pretty dramatic. Meeting resistance at every point along the way. That's right. <laughs> what I notice is if I take really good care of myself, if I practice self-care by getting enough sleep, by eating well, by practicing yoga, by filling up my cup, I get to be a more calm and non-reactive person. I get to practice equanimity. So this week I commit to going to bed at a reasonable time. I commit to down-leveling my yoga practice if I need to so that I don't have to be exhausted when I get home. So that in the morning when I wake up, I can be a calm, gathered together, and more equanimous mother to my children. And I commit to not reacting strongly to the things that don't matter and something that won't matter in five minutes or five days so that I can focus on the things that do matter and celebrate all the great things that are happening in my life. So I hope you'll do the same and let us know how it goes. Get on the Facebook groups, come to the meetings. I know some of you have skipped some. Come back. Yoga is the art of coming back. And have a great week. Bye. Bye.